Welcome to the Step App 2.0. In this video, we're going to go through some basic steps to get you logged in and set up for success. All new users will receive an email with a temporary password in order to log in for the first time. Click the Login to Get Started button in that email and log in with the temporary password provided. Once logged in, you'll be asked to create a new password. Please write your password down in a secure place so that you don't forget it. After login, you'll see the dashboard screen. The dashboard is an overview of your company information. You can see how many clients you have, how many sites you've added, any upcoming audits, and how many reports your company is generating. As you begin to insert information into your account, the dashboard will begin to populate. Next, we'll move to the user tab, which includes information specific to the users in your company. If you're a Walkway Management Group franchisee, your MSA territory will be viewable, along with your user Walkway safety certifications, validation surface info, and past reports created by your company. When setting up your account, you'll need to do some housekeeping like adding your ANSI A326.3 validation service. First, add the information requested for the ANSI A326.3 validation service for the new sensor validation procedure. On the back of each ANSI A326.3 validation surface, there is a validation surface serial number, a wet decoff value, a dry decoff value, or both. Simply insert the values found on the back of your validation surface into the correct field. Note, if you don't have an ANSI A326.3 validation surface, you can visit Walkway Management Group's web store to purchase the surface. Next, if you've successfully completed the UNT Department of Mechanical Engineering certification process, you'll need to add that certificate here. Please upload or drop a PDF, PNG, or JPEG of your certificate. Type in the date on which you completed your certification. This is found on your certificate. Note, all certificates expire three years after completion, and all certificates will be added to the appendix of your STEP audit reports. Next, if you have any, you'll need to add new sub-users by clicking Add New Sub-User found within your user details. The main user of the STEP account can add new sub-users who work under the same company and license. Adding a sub-user allows them to access your company's STEP account, including adding clients, creating sites, performing audits, and generating reports. Note, each sub-user has their own page to display certificates and information specific to them. Now back to the dashboard to talk about adding clients. After you've set up your account by adding a validation surface, UNT certificate, and members of your company as sub-users, you can start to input your clients. Click the Clients tab, then Add New Client button, and enter your client's information. A client is any person or organization that will use your company's floor safety services. Note, certain aspects of your client's information will be used in the STEP audit report. When a client account has been established, you'll be able to add a site by clicking Add New Site within the client's account. Note, a site is the exact address where the slip testing will take place. A site can be an address or a name, for example, CBS Tower, Dom's Restaurant, or 375 Broadway. If the site information is the same as the client's information, you can click the toggle at the top right to copy that information. If the site's information is new, you can click Add New Site and populate the fields accordingly. After adding a site, you can add an audit for a client at a specific site within the client's account. Click the site you'd like to add a new audit for and click Add New Audit. If you want to create an audit and have not added a client or a site yet, click Add New Client or Add New Site from the drop-down to instantly add new clients and sites to an audit. Once you've added client, site, and audit information into the STEP app, you'll notice that the dashboard is beginning to get populated. 
To add an area, click the Add New Area button within the site to fill out information about the hard surface flooring conditions specific to the area you will be testing at this site. You will be asked to name each area, input the area number from the bot, and drop or upload at least one photo of each area. Next, you'll be asked to create a diagram or insert floor plans representing that specific area. After you upload your diagram, you'll be asked to identify the product use category you've chosen that best defines that area. Remember to also indicate the floor type, floor finish, floor texture, floor finish condition, and the slope of the surface. At this point, you can add the locations you'll be testing in each area. You can either insert the locations now or later on on the audits page. The last step in creating an audit is to input any comments that you want included on the step report for that specific area. If you'll be testing multiple areas at this specific site, you can add as many areas as needed to complete an audit for this specific site. If the areas are very similar, for example, identical bathrooms, then you can preload an already created area to make this process less time consuming and more efficient. You've now entered all of the information you need to start slip testing. Whether you are about to start a slip test or have already completed your slip test, you'll need to press Run Test. Then click the Validate Now button. You will first be prompted to answer whether or not you've performed the pre-testing sensor validation procedure. If you do not have the ANSI A326.3 sensor validation surface or did not perform the pre-testing validation procedure, then please click I don't have an ANSI A326.3 sensor validation surface. Do you have an ANSI A326.3 sensor validation surface? Please make one 8-inch measurement, then rotate the testing device 180 degrees and make a second 8-inch measurement on the ANSI A326.3 validation surface. Remember, if your sensor validation surface includes a wet number, you must use your SLS solution to perform the two runs. If you only have a dry decoff number, then perform the two runs in a dry condition. If the average of the two runs is within plus or minus 0.03 of the value stated for the wet decoff testing, or within plus or minus 0.04 of the value stated for the dry decoff testing on your validation surface, then proceed with testing. Once the pre-sensor validation procedure is completed, you're able to access the run test modal to add BOT3000E data. As you can see, this audit includes two areas. Each area has a unique identification code which corresponds with that particular test area. For example, the Great Hall is area 001, but the Greek and Roman exhibit is area 002. Each location within an area also has a unique identification code. For example, the Great Hall has five locations within area 001, and the Greek-Roman exhibit has four locations within area 002. Now select a location in an area to add data. Then click Bot Test if you want to connect the bot via Bluetooth. If you've already completed an audit on the Bot3000E in the past and have saved the data to the Bot3000E, download the data to your computer via USB. 
click Upload Data and select the block of data you want uploaded for this location. On the left hand side, you'll upload the data.log file downloaded off the bot. Next, match the file name of the data.log file selected and upload the PDF with the same file name. As you can see, this location is turned green as this location's decoff data passes the slip resistant threshold for its product use category. You can now view this location's data by clicking the dot on the page. Continue this process to add data for the rest of the locations. If you do not select the same PDF file name as the data.log selected, you'll find an error as the PDF and the data.log files must match. Don't forget to click Save after you upload your data. When you click Save, we can see that the slip testing data is input throughout the audit and passes the standard for this product use category so far. Now we will continue to add slip testing data for the rest of the locations in this area by selecting Run Test and each location we need data for. If you press Minimize instead of Save, a bar will appear showing Open Audits containing data that is yet to be saved. You can see by the three red dots that three locations in this audit still need to be saved. This bar will stay active until the data is saved, even if you close the window or website. Now after we save, you can see that the STEP platform creates a history and database for all the slip testing data. You can click download data to download any past data that has been previously uploaded to the STEP platform. Next, let's upload data for area two, the Greek and Roman exhibit, with a live Bot3000 e-test by connecting the bot to the STEP app via Bluetooth. Click Bot Test and make sure your Bot3000E is turned on and in range. Once the STEP app is paired with your bot, please select the location you want to test and click Bot Test again. The area and location selected on the STEP platform will then be sent to your bot. Your bot will say Area Location Received. The user will then perform an ANSI A326.3 field test as the STEP platform waits for you to finish the test. Remember, the auditor will have to verify the bot, recondition their sensor, perform the sensor validation procedure, and complete the field test in either prevailing or clean conditions, wet or dry. Once the auditor completes the full ANSI A326.3 field test, they must select done on their bot. Once creating report disappears from the bot, please select continue on the bottom right corner of the step app. The data will begin to Bluetooth transfer from your bot straight into the STEP platform. When the Bluetooth transfer is 100% complete, you will see the location filled with data. As you can see, location 1 turned red. The slip test data did not pass the threshold for this product use category. Since this process was completed live via Bluetooth, the STEP platform was able to retrieve the PDFs from the bot and automatically download them to your computer for future use. Once again, always remember to press save once you've finished. When you've finished adding all of the decoff data that you need for the audit, we'll generate a report. If you have a validation surface, 
then you'll be asked to complete two last runs on the validation surface and enter the values in a post-test sensor validation form. If you did not perform the pre-test sensor validation procedure, or you do not have the sensor validation surface, then you will not be asked to collect the post-test sensor validation data. Click Generate Report, then Validate Now, and enter the information. This step will be skipped if you did not use a validation surface in the beginning. The last step in generating a report is to fill out a quick questionnaire to make sure all the information that is needed for the third-party audit report is confirmed. You'll be asked to name who the report should be addressed to, who the auditors were, along with other important questions to make sure the slip testing procedures followed all relevant standards and protocols. Once you finish the questionnaire, all audit information will be reviewed and generated by our certified third-party walkway safety specialists who are trained to analyze risk exposure according to relevant industry standards. Once all relevant information is reviewed, the STEP team will either accept or reject the audit reports depending on the procedures followed and information submitted. If a report is rejected, the STEP team will inform the user of the reasons for rejection. If there are no issues, STEP will accept your report and you will find the generated report on your Reports tab to be downloaded and shared with your client. You're now ready to use the STEP app 2.0. Good luck slip testing!